It's May, the roebuck season is well underway and we're getting up close and personal with this enchanting little deer. Many of you enjoyed the Northern Shooting Show at the weekend. We have a Game Fair preview. Rob Gearing's back with Gearing's Guide and this one it's for hunters on the run or with the runs. There's news, there's hunting YouTube, there's Hello Charlie. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. absolute joy back in time for a cup of coffee it's not often that a stalker says to you that roebuck he's going to turn up at 9 30 a.m it means a lion and that's exactly what i did the walk into the high seat is in perfect weather that makes it the ideal day for filming as well as shooting the rifle and the scope are ready the roebuck hasn't yet appeared and i've got time to drink in the wildlife in this part of east yorkshire First up, a hare scratching his face. Next, a cock pheasant shouting out his territory. And then we have a couple of gay mallards. Bang on cue, the roebuck walks out of the wood opposite and marches slowly down the tram lines in the middle of the field. He's a good looking cull buck, a little six pointer, just right to take this morning, exactly the one the stalker wants me to go for. Of course, the danger of filming is you get so wound up in it, you forget to take the shot. And I do leave it too late as the buck crosses left in front of me and then just disappears into the trees. Now, I don't think the stalker's going to forgive me for this. A few minutes later, he reappears directly below me and walks away the other side of a patch of long reeds. I can't take the shot up his backside. And next thing I know, he's vanished into those reeds and sat down. Now we are in for a long wait. The next animal is a real pleasure. It's a roe doe. And in May at this time of year, she's about to drop. She's a lot more flighty than the male. She's carrying responsibilities in that unborn kid or those kids. OK, let's take a break from the filming and bring you here to Germany from Yorkshire and go from hunting to amateur photographer because a lot of you ask how we get these shots well we use a setup like this this is a dioscope from zeiss and it's a perfectly ordinary camera on top a lot of scopes come with the ability to record inbuilt which can be good but then you also have the problem that the the technology in the camera can become obsolete and the scope is still perfectly good this way you get to change the camera when new cameras come out it's really simple you just slide this off here like that you can use this as a spotting scope and when you want to record something slide this back on again and you're ready to press the button and start filming i'm over here look all the way over here and i don't even need to shout you can see how close this setup brings you to the deer we're using what is in effect a 3000 millimeter lens if you were using that on your camera years ago, that would be a lens that was actually three metres, ten feet long. Back to our doe and something makes her nervous. She's off. So what about the buck? Well, as hoped, it doesn't take long and he comes out of the reeds. I've had time to change the camera lens to a normal one and you can see the difference in field of view. He trots out, slows just before he goes into the wood and that's my chance. It's a heart shot. You can see him jump up and race back into the reeds. For some people, stalking is about sneaking up, stalking up on a deer. But even sitting in a high seat, it is truly exciting. That moment, and he's down. Now let's forget about the camera bit because finding the deer is the more important bit now. Luckily, I have the trusty Field Sports Channel hounds, Muffin and Miner. It is the work of moments for them to sniff out the buck in the long grass. Oh yes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And there he is. The lovely six point buck I saw as close as this, 
through my spotting scope is now right in front of me. Well, that was a very satisfactory outing and we have a lot more like that in the archives. This is a particularly charming shot of a doe and her triplet kids out stalking with Dom Holtham. David was lucky enough to get close enough to get these shots. Click on the link on the screen to watch it. Now from something beautiful to something completely different, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. An unusual number of shooting accidents has highlighted gun safety over the last few weeks. A 13-year-old boy was shot and died in an accident with an air gun in Suffolk. Ben Ragg was fatally wounded when he and two friends were shooting an air rifle. The UK average for sporting shooting deaths is fewer than one per year. This came two weeks after a 41-year-old man in County Cork in Ireland died in an apparent shooting accident, an accidental discharge from a shotgun. And police have called for better gun safety in New Zealand after three injuries on the opening weekend of the duck season in May. The World Wildlife Fund has come up with a Star Wars-like early warning system for poachers. With an unprecedented spike in poaching across the world, the WWF is using a $5 million global impact award from Google to create an umbrella of technology to protect wildlife. In four sites in Namibia, Kenya and Nepal, it has been testing a combination of drones, CCTV, increased patrols, rifle shot recognition software and this device, a long-range thermal camera. It's now planning to increase coverage of sites where there are animals at risk from poachers. Staying in Africa, and a former Springbok rugby player and safari operator has gained himself a free herd of Cape Buffalo. A court ruled that Henny LaRue now owns the 20 valuable animals that once ranged free at Thomas Baines Game Reserve near Grahamstown in South Africa. The herd crossed the drought-depleted dam to LaRue's adjacent hunting mecca, Crown River Safari, in 2010, and he has been fighting to prove ownership since then. A deer has got its head stuck in a light globe. Here is the Belisha buck in this photo provided by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, which shows a deer with its head caught in the globe from a lighting fixture over its head. It eventually freed itself. And finally, didn't we do well? Field Sports Channel has reached 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. According to YouTube, that means we get a special silver award like these to put on our wall. Charlie says he's going to tell his mum. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Yes, 100,000 subscribers and a nice silver button to put on our mantelpiece. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Now, let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie, this is Eddie. I'm out here in Cambridgeshire. It's a lovely sunny morning and I managed to get myself a nice young fallow buck for the freezer. Hello Charlie, it's uh, Andy here from North Wales with uh, John. We're uh, out doing a bit of foxing. Uh, there's not much happening at the moment. Uh, we did see one earlier on but it wouldn't come into our core. Hello Charlie. Hey Charlie. It's uh, Chase from Norfolk, I'm out with my little brother again. Been out shooting. We've got us a little rabbit. Hello Charlie. Just heading to Wamba State Forest. Hopefully, we'll find some deer today. <laughs> That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox, or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you very much for those. Please keep them coming. Now, let's have a look at the game fair scene. I've just been to Ragley Hall in Warwickshire. <laughs> Do you remember the dog days of 2013? That gorgeous summer game fair at Ragley Hall. Well, they're recreating it. It was everything you want a game fair to be. It had guns, it had fishing rods, it had people basking in the sun. The shop frontage of the game fair is probably the equivalent to six Regent Street. These things are never easy to pull off. And here's the man who's got to pull it off this year. 
Certainly in the shooting areas, we are definitely going back to our core responsibility. We are a game fair after all. It's always been the longest shooting line in Europe, and Tony says it's going to be the same again. It's about 580 metres long, fronted by um, Rob Fenwick of EJ Churchill. It will feel a much more inclusive and a much more inviting area than perhaps it has been over the last few years. After the event, it takes us approximately a week to clear up all the claims that are either missed or shot. Uh, and we fill up an entire bin wagon with all the empty cartridges that we collect. We are very much looking again at bringing back the fishing, making it a more um, user-friendly area, returning to the spay casting, areas that are hugely popular and which we tended to ignore over the previous years. We want to appeal to a huge wide audience of people who want to take part in basically events that are in the countryside. So freshwater fishing, I think is more popular than football in England um, and game fishing in its own right is incredibly popular so we want to appeal to both audiences. Uh, the car parking at the, uh, the venue here, we have approximately 200 acres. Um, the night before we can park about 25,000 cars on that. A game fair like this needs logistics, it needs organisation and it needs statistics. Here is a master of game fair numbers. We use approximately half a million gallons of water during the event. Uh, and I come from, a, a, well, it's actually the smallest town in the country now, called Kempston in Bedfordshire, and it's probably about the same usage as that. We have uh, 10,000 metres of underground water pipe laid end to end. That would probably stretch to the outreach of the Birmingham back. Oh, nearly got the lens. Lots to look forward to at the Game Fair this year. It's on the 29th to the 31st of July 2016. Book hospitality, book camping, buy tickets at thegamefair.org. Now from the tame environment of Ragley Hall to the wilds of Kyrgyzstan where Rob Gearing has got tips for you on hydration. Right, I'm not big on taking loads of medical stuff, but a few things that I really do always take are uh, oral rehydration um, powders. You can buy them from Boots, you can buy them from all sorts of places. You can see I've used that one, right? Most people come into a different environment. We're in the Tian Shen Mountains now, sort of 30 kilometers from the Chinese border. I've used that. Craig and David have also used them as well. You, you invariably get the shits on these things and you don't want to ruin your trip. And if you get the salts back in your body, it really is, it's a glorified version of that with a few electrolytes in there. But if you get the shits, it will ruin it for you if you don't get the right elements back into your body. So take a few packets of that, it will make the difference. So uh, that's one thing I will always insist on bringing along with me. And modium if you get really pooey, obviously. While this is taking its time to work, guys, you've got your coconut fat. Nothing worse than a sore backside, so the trusty coconut fat is full marks again. From the Kirk Mountains to the wider world of hunting and shooting, on YouTube it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. A neat one, says viewer Nelson Freeman, and thank you for sending in this film, Nelson. Field and Stream is showing off a duck day with US legendary hunting writer Nash Buckingham's shotgun on a lake in Wisconsin. As mentioned in news, the duck hunting season is underway in New Zealand. Some 30,000 hunters turned out across the country at the start of the new season. Among the first to get a film out is Ames Limited film filming in Bay of Plenty. A viewer called Andrew sends in a film from Peter Nobes in Australia who specialises in rabbit and fox shooting with his 5x20 and 5x18, Excite 1 and Excite 2. Australia is still not short of either of those two pest species. Shas TV offers its best wild boar of 2016 in this film as well as other big game on driven hunts including a double at deer. The opposite end of the pig hunting spectrum in this film as club 
Shark Boys Hunting NZ get their hands on a thermal imager, the Quantum XD50S. They put it through its paces on hogs. Hirsch Yacht in Poland is Deutsche Yacht Zeitung's TV's latest outing in Poland after Red Stags. Nicole and Axel score on their first hunting trip. It is half an hour and it is in German, but stay with it if you want to learn something about this kind of sport. If you have missed any of them, Sir Kaut continues his mission to take women stalking. In this episode, it is Karen who is out for her first time and isn't sure whether she wants to pull the trigger. Still, she takes two young bucks. And finally, more Roebuck and Bockjagd. May 2016 has German hunting channel Der Einer Jäger after a season opening buck. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, if you don't like those, perhaps you'll like this. It's our clay shooting programme, Clay Sports. This month we're on the road to Rio at the Diodoro Stadium in Rio de Janeiro, where we see GB team stars Ed Ling, Alina Allen, Amber Hill, Tim Neal and Steve Scott competing in the Shotgun World Cup. We've also got Henry Hopking and he's training your brain for great clay shooting. Meet all the clay shooting stars on Clay Sports. Click on the link on the screen for more. And we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or go to our website, Field Sports Channel, where you can do both of those and subscribe to us on YouTube and pop your email address into our register page. And we'll constantly contact you about the show. Field Sports Britain is at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. And from Germany, goodbye.